Hey there, I'm John, and welcome to Hand Tool Homeschool, where we are bringing homeschool dads and kids together, one woodworking project at a time. And today, I want to show you a technique called a roundover. We're going to use our trusty number four plane to do a roundover on a board. It's simply going to take the flat edge of a board. We're going to round it over, and this is going to look fantastic for the bottom base of a box or even the lid, whatever you choose, maybe on something else you're making. But it's just a very quick way to round that over and you get a nice mitered look on the corner. It's fantastic. It's quick to do. So that's what I'm going to show you today. All right, now let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're preparing to do a project and you're going to use your plane is you want to make sure the plane is adjusted correctly. And the way that you would do this is to go ahead and adjust the blade, the plane iron, so that it's sitting up inside. You don't want any of it sticking out and you want to start taking strokes across a practice piece of wood here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that plane just down and out just a little bit at a time, take that iron and just keep on adjusting it so it's coming out ever so slightly until you start getting a shaving. And so it's going to take me a few strokes to find that. But here in a minute, I'm going to start getting a shaving. There we go. Okay, now you can see I'm starting to get a shaving here. So that lets me know that I where I am with my plain iron. And from here you can tell the thickness of the shaving. That's actually a little thick. Um, you can't tell very well in the picture. It's thin, but it's still thicker than, thicker than I may want. It just depends. But I'm gonna go ahead and back it off just ever so slightly. And what I'm trying to do is just make sure I can take a nice full width shavings off of this. Okay, so back back down a little bit. And now I'm taking full width shavings. And these things are very clear. Let me see if I can show you. You can kind of see my thumb behind the shaving there. It's like translucent. So it's pretty thin. Translucent, is that how you say it? Yeah, translucent. So it's pretty thin. So now that I've got that done with my practice board, I'm ready to move on to the actual project. It's important to make this adjustment before you move on to your dimensioned wood that you've got ready for your project. You'd hate to try to adjust your plane on the piece that you're actually going to finish. So let's move on to that piece and I'll show you the roundover technique. Okay, so here's my dimensioned board and I have got I have got the end squared with the edge here. They're very nice and square. I ran this on the shooting board to make sure it was 90 degrees. And what I'm gonna do now is place it in the vise so I can show you what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and bring the camera in at another angle so you can see exactly what we're doing. Okay, so I've got the piece in my vise and this is a little bit awkward of a camera shot for me, but I'll get another angle so you can see it as well from that other side. But what, what I'm doing here is I'm taking my plane at a 45 degree across the board like this, across the top, and I also have it tilted at a 45 degree angle this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it across here. And normally I would grab the knob here, but for the sake of the picture, I'm going to try to hold it down here so you can see better. But what I'm going to do is just come across like this. And I'm not really getting much of any shaving, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust it, taking the plain iron to a more aggressive cut. And what you want to do is you just want to slide it across, just even, all the way across. Try to keep it at a 45 degree angle both ways. And now you can see right here, I'm getting this bevel and that's exactly what I want to do. And depending on the thickness of your piece is going to depend on how wide of a bevel you want. So in this case, I've got a three quarter inch board here and I'm going to go ahead and probably make it somewhere around a quarter inch bevel, maybe a little more before I do the next phase. So I'm going to take a little more aggressive cut now to make it a little quicker. 
And one thing I want to mention is here, take your time and just make sure that you're fairly even all the way across with your bevel. That's what you want to see. You know, sometimes when you're starting, it may you may have the tendency to go fast and you'll get all out of um, out of you'll get a bunch of unevenness there. So just take your time. And if you find that you're a little bit wider in one area than another, it's okay to just come down and take another swipe across until you even it out. So just nice and easy, just do what you have to do to keep it even. Okay, so I'm going to stop about there. It's actually a little fatter than a quarter, but now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit more of an angle and I'm going to start to make a secondary bevel. And you can see right here, all the way across, I've got this secondary bevel happening. So I'm going to do that for a little bit and I'm going to make more of an angle until I'm going almost flat across. And then from here, I'm gonna switch it around to the other side and do the other side. So let me move the camera around and get you the other angle. Okay, so I flipped the board around and I'm gonna go ahead and put the bevel, the bevels on this side like I did the other. And hopefully this gives you just a different angle you can see and uh, I hope that helps. So check this out, again, I'm gonna be trying to shoot for about a 45 degree angle across the top and also skewed 45 degree angle this way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking my shavings and creating that first bevel. In this case, about a fat quarter, roughly across this side. Okay, just checking to make sure I'm a little even. I'm a little uneven on this side. You can't really see that, but I'm going to go ahead. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Don't be afraid to just take partial swipes to even it out. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep going. Now what I'm going to do is create the secondary bevel across. And I'm going to keep dropping the plane down creating more bevels till I'm about flat across. So now at this point, it's almost rounded. Let's see if I can show you. It's just a little squared off on the top, but we'll take that off here in just a minute. But we're getting rounded now pretty well and fairly even. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and start to round that top a little bit. And for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. I want to mention to you something right here. This is key. See how it's, let's see if I can get up here and show you. See how it's starting to chip here? Well, that's because right here, you can see it's starting to crack off the end because you have unsupported fibers that are breaking off. So whenever you're dealing with end grain and you're planning across it, if you don't have this in support, it's going to snap off. That's okay in this case because we're going to be doing the round over on this end over here and it's going to go ahead and um, take care of anything that's cracked off because it's going to round this off here. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. But for now, I'm going to put this back in here and we're going to finish rounding it off. Okay, so back to this side. Now, I really want to illustrate something to you. I don't know if you can see right here, you have a, just a few little pieces of wood here. That might not look like much to you, but it's starting to crack off the end. So let's just take a real quick, see if I can illustrate this a little better. Okay, now you can kind of see that's starting to crack off the end because you're going across the end grain again you're, when you're going with the end grain, if you go off the end and it's unsupported, it's going to crack. In this case, it doesn't matter. And as you will see, when we do the roundover on this edge right here, it's just going to hide all that 
and it's going to make it disappear. It's not going to be there anymore. So there's really, it's really not a big deal at all. So that's why you always want to do the end grain end first so that you can take off anything that cracks when you're doing the long edge. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, but uh, let's go ahead and go to the long edge now so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, so I almost forgot something really, really important. Uh, before we go to the long edge, what we want to do is we want to take very shallow uh, shavings across this round over to really get it as round as we can. So let's go ahead, back off your plain iron again. On your plain iron, you just want it sticking out ever so slightly so you can take shallower shavings. And you're just going to work your way all the way across and over. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around to come from the other side. And I'm going, starting to go a little long ways. You really want to keep it skewed. It's much easier to control this way. Okay, so what I want to do after that really quick is to take 120 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to rub it over like this. And this is super smooth. It is so nice. And it is really, really an accurate method to make this rounder. Let's see if I can give you a better at shot here. I mean, you can see that's pretty even. So I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and go to the long edge now. And by the way, the better you become at doing roundovers, the less you have to sand. And so I'm kind of doing a quick demo here, and I haven't done this a ton of times myself, um, but it's a very simple and you know mine might not be perfect here my line is not perfect but I didn't take a long time to do it so if you take your time the more time you take it's gonna turn out fantastic and I'll show you at the end a project I did where it, it turned out great but anyhow for now let's go ahead and go to the long edge and in this case what we're gonna do we're not gonna skew it or ang angle it over like this we're just gonna angle it at 45 and we're gonna run straight across like this I'm going to go ahead and adjust it to, to take a deeper cut. And as you can see, I'm starting to get that bevel right there all the way across. And just make sure you're staying nice and even, and that one's pretty even, so I'm happy with that. Okay. Again, about a fat quarter. I'm going to start making my secondary bevel and start dropping my plane and making the round over. I'm going to flip the board around. Okay, make a couple adjustments here. Take a little more bevel off the top edge, get that rounded a little more. I'm going to go ahead and just take a look. I'm going to visually inspect it and see where I'm at and if I'm happy with this. And I'm fairly happy with it. So now I'm going to go ahead and 
back my plane iron off a little bit so I can take shallower cuts and go ahead and make that round over. I usually stop and flip it because if I go too far over, I feel like I lose control. So I try to keep it on this same side, just, just about to the top where I'm starting to round over. And this should do it one last time here. And you can see I'm getting really fine shavings here. And that's what I want when I'm doing my round over. I don't want to take aggressive cuts because it'll just keep squaring the board up. And I want to take those edges off when I'm doing a round over. And the more you practice this, the better your miter to ends get as well. But I'm going to go ahead and um, sand this down real quick. Just take off any edges that might be left over. Wow, that's fantastic. So, see if I can give you a look here. So there you can get an idea of the round over. It looks fairly even. I'm happy with that. Let's go to the other side where it's mitered. So there's the corner. And what I love about this technique is when done right and when you take your time, you really get this nice mitered corner. Look at that. And there's a top view. And if you're slightly off, if it's slightly curved, I mean, it's got an ever so slight curve here, you can really just sand that right out. It's not a big deal. And it'll make it so straight and nice. But I'm, I'm happy with that for a really quick demo. But that is how you make a round over. And now you've got your two edges. So when you do that all the way around, you're going to have that nice, those nice corners, nice roundovers. It's going to make a base of a box or whatever, a lid you're using it for. It's going to look fantastic. So, very, very pleased with that. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this chisel tray I made a while back, which is pretty cool. Um, same concept here. For the base of the chisel tray, I just did the round over. This is a piece of quarter inch pine. I just did a round over on every side, starting with the end grain side first. I had some cracking. Then I did it over the long edge, took away those cracks, and it ended up, I ended up having nice, sharp, mitered corners that I think turned out fantastic all the way around. So that's what a so you get an idea through this what the base looks like on a box or a tray. All right, well, I hope that helped today. I love roundovers. They are fun. They are fast to do, especially with just a little bit of practice. And they make fantastic looking bases, bottoms, edges, whatever you're going for. If that's what you need, that's the kind of look. It's, it's fantastic. So that's a quick technique. We're going to be using that on several projects coming up. And if you don't mind, I'd appreciate it if you share this video, if you found it valuable. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like. And also over at www.handtoolhomeschool.com. You can subscribe there. There's some pretty cool stuff for free. So please check that out. Again, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps you. I'm glad that you were here today. And I appreciate you. So until next time, remember life's most important order. Love God, love each other, and woodwork. We'll see you next time.